Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2 is considered to be one of the most disappointing and awful sequels in gaming. I, I don't even know where to begin. Why? 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 I don't understand. Failing to live up to the reception or fanfare of the original, which many consider to be one of the best Star Wars games ever produced. I, on the other hand, disagree. All because of two reasons. The power fantasy and the narrative. And I think it's why The Force Unleashed 2 is better than you think. Even better than the first game. How? Let's dive in. So, I'm no stranger to having the hottest towers takes like this, and this, and yes, this. And unfortunately, I've never been a fan of the first game either. I even made a video on it years ago which I don't think was the best argued or the best made. I think it's necessary to first go over why the game elevates the sequel. Let's start with the power fantasy. Now saying that the first game doesn't work as one is a big claim. I mean, we are talking about a game with this in it. But let's define terms first. What is a power fantasy? The point of a power fantasy is to give players a sense of empowerment, to give them a satisfying journey and challenge. And to be fair, I think it does do a decent job of that. Well, in the first two levels to be exact. You see, early on, the game just lets you go to town with these squishy cannon fodder type enemies. Going to make it. But as soon as you hit the third level, the game goes downhill from there. All because the game fails to scale for the player experience. Instead of a game that naturally feels right, in terms of progression and challenge, the Force Unleashed just never feels like you're getting stronger. In fact, the game goes from this to this. In other words, it's the enemy design and the core combat system that undermine the power fantasy. After the second level, the game introduces tougher enemies, which is par for the course for any game. The problem though, is that not only are they damage sponges that soak up a ton of damage, but they power through your attacks mid-combo. And to defeat them, you need to rely on cheesy strategies. Which is made worse by how much health they have. Where exactly is the power fantasy here? It just feels so mindless and tedious. Which is a nice segue to the boss fights. I have to say, The Force Unleashed has the worst designed boss fights I've ever encountered. It's absolutely random and frustrating. There's no strategy, no patterns, no logic to these fights. Sometimes a combo will work, only for it to suddenly not work. Why? The recurring theme here with the enemy design is that they limit your playstyle. And that leads to the second issue, the combat system. Which never goes beyond being a stormtrooper stomping simulator. Take a look at these combos. It's impressive how many moves you can unlock, but very little has utility. See this flashy combo?
It's cool, but stormtroopers die from one hit. And the tougher enemies just interrupt you mid-combo. So what's the point of this move? The only consistently useful combos were the lightning charged ones. Mainly because it stun locks pretty much everything. The game is also missing so many core features you'd expect from a title like this. You know how in games, you can see the enemy clearly signal that they're going to attack. Well, somehow, the Force Unleashed lacks readable enemy attacks. There's little to no indication put on the upcoming enemy attack, which makes getting hit feel really cheap and unfair with little to no time to react. Speaking of reacting, this game has no way of countering. There's no way to parry in this game. All you can do is just block. Which is a shame because I really love punishing enemies in games. Having said all this, I just get the sense that LucasArts didn't design the game past the original vision. Notice how there's a lack of anything besides stormtroopers. No duels with bosses, no beefier enemy types, just stormtroopers. The fact that the game just works when these guys are around, but doesn't when it's not them, says a lot about how the game progresses, causing the game to feel less and less like a power fantasy. Now, do you know of a series that did the power fantasy better and then some? Even before The Force Unleashed? It's the God of War games. As soon as I finished The Force Unleashed, I jumped into Chains of Olympus and, well, I just can't believe what I was missing out on. Every single combo feels like it has purpose and utility. The enemies have incredibly well telegraphed and easy to read wind-up animations. You can parry enemies and punish them. Even the tougher enemies I never had a hard time dealing with thanks to the readable attacks and the tight combat system. The few enemies that have strategies to them, like having shields, can be dealt with easily before wailing on them however you like. Oh, and bosses? They are so well crafted, you need to strategize and learn from their patterns. And ultimately, God of War Chains of Olympus just felt like what a power fantasy should be. Never did I feel like it was unfair from start to finish. And I just wish I could say the same for The Force Unleashed. I will defend the Jedi Council! As for the narrative, the story just suffers from weak character motivations and a messy plot structure. Let me ask you this. What is Starkiller's driving motivations? What does Starkiller want? Because for the life of me, I can't tell you what he or Vader wants besides doing the good or bad thing. But why? Why does Starkiller want to serve Vader even after he got <laughs> Does Starkiller feel like he has no one else to go to? Does he see Vader as some sort of father figure? Why does he choose to save the Rebellion? Does he care about the Rebel leaders? Or what they're fighting for? 
and I couldn't tell you what Starkiller sees in Juno besides being attractive. Because they never actually discuss their feelings or interests. We don't even see Starkiller trying to avenge his father, the guy Vader murdered before his very eyes. You meet him for 10 seconds in the midpoint, and then never bring him up again. Which is odd, because the Wii version, he does. You killed my father! But not in the next gen versions. And I don't understand Vader's motivations. At first he said he planned to take down the Emperor with Starkiller. Yes, only together can we defeat him. But then the Emperor finds out, and Vader pretends to kill you. Painfully, mind you. And then at the end, it turns out Vader backstabs you again and says this was all part of a plan to lure the rebels? I lied, as I have from the very beginning. So did Vader go to Kashyyyk to kidnap Starkiller 20 years ago just to hatch this convoluted plot? Sorry, but this sounds more like the writers prioritized the plot twist more than what Vader really could have wanted. A son? Yeah, I just find it so baffling that they never explored this idea. Why didn't Vader see Starkiller as a surrogate son? We saw that in The Last of Us, Joe lost his daughter, and so he saw Ellie as a second chance. Vader thought he lost his kids, so why couldn't Vader see Starkiller as a second chance? It would even make sense why Vader hid Starkiller, then trained him, and knew that because Palpatine would find out, they would have to strike first. I do feel like this makes for more of a compelling dynamic than being so plot twist driven. I will hunt them down and destroy them, as you always intended. Master. And lastly, on the structure of the story, I just don't understand why Vader wasn't the sole antagonist in the story. Come with me. More will be here soon. Why bring in Palpatine and make him the final boss when Starkiller has nothing to do with him, thematically or emotionally? The game sets up Vader from the very beginning, having murdered your father and then kidnapping you. That should have been a straightforward arc. Hello. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Instead, no. Palpatine is the actual villain you have to defeat. It all just feels so shallow and empty. On the whole, The Force Unleashed always felt disappointing and lacking to me ever since I played it in 2008. So, about that Force Unleashed 2. By no means am I saying The Force Unleashed 2 is an amazing game. It's not. It's definitely rushed, it's repetitive, and the levels are padded out as if they knew that the game would be too short. But I just think the sequel surpasses the original in the two fundamental areas. With the power fantasy, the sequel finally feels like one. Like the God of War games, the combat feels tight and flowing. In many ways, they shift away from the cheesy, tedious enemy designs from the first game. More stormtroopers and squishy enemies to enhance the unstoppable fantasy. Even the beefier enemy types are better designed. There are a lot more strategies to deal with them beyond holding down the lightning button. It's just much more thoughtful here. The game also has readable enemy attack animations. 
which means the game is never unfair since those attacks are well telegraphed in advance. Speaking of reactions, you can finally parry and punish enemies, which results in making melee battles just way more fun and exciting here than before. There's also some neat cinematic set piece moments that really stand out. And boss fights? It just feels like a traditional boss fight. The Vader boss battle is infinitely more playable, more exciting, and more meaningful here too. Star killer could not kill me. What hope do you have? I have defeated you before, I will do it again! And he is actually the big bad here, not Palpatine. Bow before me, or she dies. The Force Unleashed 2 is the power fantasy I always wanted from the original game. It's so refined, so scaled well here, and I just have to give kudos to the team for learning from all the mistakes from the first game, which they also did with the story. Wait! Don't! Juno? Yes! Character motivations? Starkiller wants Juno. That's it. From the very start, Starkiller, or his clone, is hell-bent on reaching her. Where is she? I don't know. What? And that's his one driving goal. I know what he wants and why he's on the journey. Far more agency here than being bossed around in the first game by everyone. But that's not all, because Starkiller is also haunted by one crippling question. Is he a clone, or is he the original? I think that's an interesting question to pose. Would Juno love the same man who supposedly died and you only have his faint memories? And I really like how Coda tells Starkiller that maybe it doesn't matter that he's a clone or not. You still don't believe that I'm a clone? I, I don't know. But I'm beginning to think it doesn't matter. I even appreciate that Vader is also hell-bent on one single goal. Find the woman and bring her to me. He will follow. Control Starkiller. There's no plot twist after plot twist with no rhyme or reason. And it all leads up to a meaningful closure at the end, with Starkiller going, Maybe Coda's right. Maybe this is all a trick, a way to get me so confused that I'd forget who I really am and become your slave again. But either way, I let you live. I've finally broken your hold over me. Now that is the way you end the character arc, showing how they've not only overcome the external threat, but also the internal one. And here's my closing thoughts. Like I said, The Force Unleashed 2 is not a great game, due to how rushed and repetitive it is. And yet, not only did LucasArts go back and learn from the criticisms of the first game, but to do all this in 9 months, you gotta admit, that's an accomplishment. I'll kill you! In those 9 months, when games take at least 2 years to develop, this game offered a power fantasy that made me feel like a badass, and a story that I understood the stakes and characters. Juno. And it's definitely a shame that this vision was never truly realized, all because of LucasArts strangely tossing this game out in 9 months in what feels like a financially desperate move. I have no doubt if they had more time, we could have really had a truly amazing game on our hands. But at least, we had a glimpse of it. A glimpse of a superior Force Unleashed experience 
in my eyes. I'm Sam Blips, and thanks for watching. I'd like to thank Nati and FarmerDude11 for supporting me on Patreon. If you enjoyed this video, I'd highly appreciate any support, whether liking the video, commenting on it, or subscribing. And if you can, support me on Patreon. It would mean a lot. Take care and thank you.